Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Chris Reeve Knives Small and Cozy and it's got the Insingo blade on it. Uh, this knife was sent to me for review by uh, at Mr. Garlic. I'm going to go ahead and turn the exposure down just a, just a touch. There we go. So you guys can actually see that. Sorry about that. Mr. Garlic on Instagram. You can see there. Give him a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and some other benefits, there is, of course, a link right down in the description. You're supporting me in the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right. So let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. Overall length of the uh, Chris Reeve Small Inkosi coming in at yeah, just a, nope, six and a half inches overall. Uh, blade length is coming in at 2.75 inches, and then your cutting edge is coming in at about 2.6, something like that. What the nice thing about this is, is it's under the three inch mark. Let me double take it. Sometimes my brain is thinking a couple steps ahead. It's definitely under three inches, which is going to make that legal in a lot of additional places, so that's wonderful. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat. <coughs> Excuse me. The Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see this is absolutely not a large knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at uh, 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue is coming in at 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. This is the closest size comparison. Let's go ahead and take a look at total cutting edge. You can see there the, uh, the Chris Reeve Inkosi has almost exactly the same amount of cutting edge as the Spyderco Para 3. So how's the action on the sky? Everybody is used to the, um, the, the saying, you know, that these have more of a hydraulic action. This is not your bearing action that we're used to uh, here in 2020. A lot of people coming into the knife world right now, they hear all this hype about Chris Reeve knives and then they've experienced some other interesting titanium frame locks or other knives running on bearings and they get this kind of lock in that really, really smooth action is the absolute pinnacle of you know value or luxury, right? They zero in on that and then they experience a Chris Reeve knife and they go, oh, this isn't why, this is not, this isn't quality at all. This is a different approach to action. They don't take an approach that's, you know, it has to be drop shutter. It has to be, you know, that it's very glassy. It's very smooth, but it's a, it's intentionally not a knife that's going to drop shut or anything like that. You absolutely can flick these knives out, you know, 100%. It's just they're not made to be the same type of thing as your bearing action. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's something that I appreciate, some, uh, you know, with Chris Reeve knives, is that they all feel almost exactly the same. The large and small Nkosi, the large and small Sabenza, and the Umnumzan all have felt the exact same. I have owned a large Nkosi, and I've owned an Umnumzan. You guys have seen my review on the Sabenza, the large and small Sabenza 21. Um, they're good knives. I prefer the Nkosi to the, uh, the large Nkosi to the large Sabenza, if you're wondering. And I prefer the Umnumzan to both. So we're going to be talking about my opinions on the small Nkosi and how it stacks up against the small Sabenza 21. It would have been nice to have them side by side. But I don't because I send the knives back that people send for me, uh, send to me for review. Anyways, the action of this guy is fantastic. It's exactly what you what uh, people have expected from Chris Reeve knives forever. Um, it's uh, these run on very large uh, phosphor bronze washers. You can pick up my flashlight in the description if you want to. Uh, are we going to be able to see in there? Kind of. You can. Yeah, you can see in there the large uh, washers, and that's going to keep dirt and debris out of the pivot. This is absolutely 100% a knife that is made to be used. It is made in a way that is very resilient to the elements, very resilient to dirt and debris, and it's just one of those knives that's going to keep going, so that's great. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3, you can see here that this knife is ever so slightly thinner than the Para 3. Uh, length and height up against two knives that are a bit awkward in the pocket. Nobody ever seems to complain about the PM2 and Para 3. Lengthwise and heightwise, no contest. This thing is thinner and shorter than both. By the way, yes, these come with lanyards. Yes, you can remove them. I know people are like, nah, I don't want the lanyard. Then you just take it off. That's all you got to do. Just take it off and there you go. You're done. 
Uh, but this one has a lanyard and I'm not going to take it off because it's not mine. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and talk about uh, thickness here on the blade. Get my calipers out. Um, the blade stock thickness is 120 seven it's probably 125 thousandths is the actual measurement i think that's appropriate for a knife of this size it does get relatively thin behind the edge uh, very edc oriented blade geometry and thickness for sure weight this is full titanium and it is not milled out on the inside they have not to my knowledge ever done that uh, the full titanium ones come in at 2.89 ounces that's fine it's under the three ounce mark for me which means I consider this ultra lightweight. Everybody's definition of that is different. Under the three ounce mark, I just don't notice any mass. And there's there's not a massive difference to me in the pocket. After about you know five minutes in the pocket, the difference between this and the mini bug out is trivial. I understand that the mini bug out weighs less and is a little bit thinner, but as far as what my brain registers. It's nothing. It's not until it weighs more than three ounces that I start to really notice the difference. So that's fine. This is an easy knife to carry whether you wear work pants, jeans, khakis. Um, may not be the best in athletic shorts, but if you wear tighter fitting pants, things like that, you're gonna be just fine with this knife. It's not thick, it's not long, it's not heavy, right? Word choice. Um, it's great. I don't have an issue with that whatsoever. I would do a hardware check on this guy. You can pick up my tools down in the description. They are all very recommendable, and a couple of those options are very inexpensive. But this has its own, uh, it's, it's hex. And fortunately, it comes with a tool for disassembly. This is something that I should point out, uh, and that I do point out every time I review a Chris Reeve knife. There are a few knives out there that are easier to disassemble than a Chris Reeve knife. Uh, this is 100% uh, A-OK -okay in my book. There are very few parts. There's the pivot and there's a couple of screws back here and you're in. And it comes with the, with the tool. In fact, they encourage regular um, cleaning and disassembly. These knives always go back exactly the way that they are supposed to and that's fantastic. A plus in my book. I've disassembled Chris Reeve knives many times. They're a breeze. It's actually kind of a joy to take this knife apart and put it back together. Anybody who is an owner or collector of a Chris Reeve knife or knives, right, they'll tell you the same thing. They're so easy to take apart. It's just, it makes, it's, it gives you confidence in the tool, right? The ability to take it apart and clean it and put it back together and know that it's always going to function the same way, that is worth pointing out. Chris Reeve knives are so easy to disassemble and put back together and their warranty is excellent. That is a huge reason by itself to pick this knife up. And by the way, you can purchase this knife right now. I'll be leaving links down in the description as of the time of this recording. Uh, a couple of different places where you guys can pick this knife up and different variants of it. So if you're interested in it, yes, it's available. All right, did we get through all that? Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy. We have the typical bead blasted Chris Reeve titanium frame. Looks nice. It's not as smooth as like polished titanium, but it's not, you know, there's no texturing here. Um, I think it looks fine. The snail trails are going to show up on a bead blasted titanium frame. And in the case of Chris Reeve knives specifically, I think the snail trails actually look really good. I like to see scratch. I like pictures of Chris Reeve knives that have scratches all over them. I think it looks cool. I honestly do. Um, the hardware, beautiful and simple, very cool. It's the same as other Chris Reeve knives. They just, the look just, I mean, you can pick out a Chris Reeve knife in a bunch, no problem. Very simple, very straightforward, very gentlemanly and classy, but at the same time, ultra capable. A lot of people make the mistake of looking at this knife and going, yeah, it's really flashy looking, but I would never use it. It's obviously not meant to be used. It's super pretty. On the contrary, good friend. Uh, this is absolutely meant to be used, 100%. Uh, these knives, not only are they meant to be used, but there is so much evidence out there on the internet of people using these knives for years. For years, you can throw a rock in any direction on the internet and find a picture of a Chris Reeve knife that has been absolutely beat into the ground and is still going. So if that's what you think, uh, I'm happy to inform you that that is incorrect. And not in like an elitist way, no. I would like people to experience the joy that you can get from these knives because they are very performance oriented and very, very durable. So that's cool. This version has the blue stud. And as you can see, as is the case with uh, Chris Reeve knives in general, that blue will wear off. There are versions of this knife that have different colored studs. And the one that I prefer is actually the, I think True North Knives has a version that's just the silver lugs. That's the version that I would go for because then there's nothing to wear away. It just always looks the same. The tumbling on, I'm gonna wipe my fingerprints off of this real quick. The tumbling on Chris Reeve knives is, as I've said many times before, amongst my favorite. Fine grain structure, nice and semi-reflective. It's just 
beautiful. Crown spine on this guy, that's another feature that I like. There are no sharp edges anywhere except for the blade, and the blade is very sharp, very well done. There's nothing to complain about on this blade. You can get this knife in Tanto, in Drop Point, or in Singo. A lot of people seem to prefer the Insingo blade, and I think if you want an EDC size knife, and but at the same time, you know, you might be putting this thing through a little bit of excess here and there, I think the Insingo blade shape and probably the Tanto are going to be the most durable. This one's got some nice belly, but still enough of a tip that you can get it into packages. It's going to be a little bit easier to open a box with this blade shape uh, because of that drop in the nose. Uh, there's uh, plenty of material down there, and it is definitely wide enough that you're not going to have to worry too much about it snapping. This version is in S35VN, as, been, as has been the case for a very long time. But I hear Chris Reeve knives are moving to S45VN. I don't know when. It is not an absolute fact. That is the rumor, but there seem to be a lot of heavy indicators that that is going to be the case. Is it? Does it matter that much, S35VN versus S45VN? Those two steels are almost exactly the same. I invite you to check out S35VN and S45VN on Knife Steel Nerds to get an understanding of the differences. They are pretty marginal. Either is fine. S35VN is amongst my favorite. In fact, it's my second favorite blade steel of all time. Plenty tough for a stainless steel. Uh, it, plenty uh, uh, corrosion resistant. It is a stainless steel as I just said, and uh, the edge retention is very good. So it's very appropriate for this knife. Um, very cool, very easy to disengage. I will say that the thumb stud, like all Chris Reeve knives, is a little bit pokey and sharp. I wish they'd do something about that. Just this ball point right here, make that wider. Make the whole thing wider. It'll be much more comfortable to engage. It's a little bit pokey, right? Disengaging the lock bar and access to it is wonderful. I have no complaints about that whatsoever. There is a single standoff back here that is act, uh, acting as the point where the lanyard is attached. That I, I would recommend just removing the lanyard, honestly. The pocket clip is in a fantastic spot. There's not a lot of knife sticking up out of your pocket. On the small and cozy, it's a bit long. I, the pocket clip could honestly be shortened to about here and it would be just fine. Uh, holding on to this knife, my hands are a little bit big. My finger wants to slip off the edge of it back here. I'm not someone who prefers a three finger position knife. Some of you are or you don't mind it. Some people have smaller hands than me, so it's not gonna be an issue. For the grip that I can get on the knife, it's extremely secure. I Even not getting a full four finger position, I can't, I'm not gonna, I, I'd be lying to you guys if I said that I felt like I was gonna drop it. It's just my preference to have a full four finger position. So that's fine. I wish it was just a little bit longer so I could get all four fingers, but considering that's just my hands that I'm making that, comment you know the comment is based on my own hands and preferences I, I can't really fault it too much it is what it is it is very comfortable to hang on to the pocket clip has quite a bill it does stick up in the hand it's definitely going to be noticeable if you're going to use this knife for long periods of time but if you're just going to get it out and make a quick cut with it put it back in your pocket no big deal i'd still like for that bill to be smaller more of a swoop less of a you know and maybe like back here the angle is great it carries just beautifully in the pocket. There's no issue whatsoever. This does have the ceramic ball detent and lock bar interface. So these always look like they're locking up super late. This is actually pretty normal for a Chris Reeve knife. The contact point is on that ceramic ball and the ceramic ball is very, very hard, which means uh, where that is contacting on the blade tang or the, the interaction is actually a ceramic ball and the steel interface of the tang. And that means that it's probably not gonna move at all. This is about where you're gonna see it on a brand new Chris Reeve knife, maybe a little bit less, right? And it's probably gonna stay right there for decades, and that's fine, um, no issue there. It does not have an over travel stop. The pocket clip is ever so slightly resting in an area where if you really push this over, it's gonna contact the pocket clip. And the position of your, your uh, index finger and middle finger, right, will also create enough pressure to where basically overextending that titanium lock bar is incredibly unlikely. I understand the purpose of the LBS or the over travel stop is to keep it from bending out because of the small area on this knife that your hands have to interact and where they're positioned when you're disengaging that lock bar. I would say there's almost zero chance of that bending out unless you're trying to do it. So this is one of those knives that really doesn't need an over travel stop. It'd be, I guess it'd be nice if it was there, but it doesn't, you don't need it, right? All right. Uh, the rest of it is looks much the same as the front. I love that they put the Chris Reeve logo up there. I, there's a lot that's aesthetically pleasing here. So little things that I can nitpick. The thumb stud, I mean, everybody knows. This is a little bit pointy, a little pokey, right? Um, I wish it was four finger, but that's just me. Um, 
boy, I, you know, there's not really a whole lot to complain about here. I'm going to say this right now. I prefer this version. The Inkosi, the difference between the Inkosi and the Sebenza is, is um, the, uh, or not, wait, the, I keep wanting to say Insingo. The Insingo is the blade, Inkosi is the model. The Inkosi handle or frame has a, a few different ergonomic lines than the Sebenza. The entire knife is also a bit more robust robust than the Sebenza. And up until here recently, uh, the Inkosi had the uh, um, ceramic detent ball interface um, and the Sebenza didn't. Now the new, the new Sebenza 31s have it. So it comes down to, do you like the look of the lines on the Inkosi or do you like the look of the lines on the Sebenza? And if you've handled them both, do you prefer the ergonomic lines uh, in your hand of this guy over the Sebenza? Me personally, I definitely go with this one. I like the Sebenza 31 small. It's all right. I just like this one better. Uh, definitely. And um, look, I'll make mention of this. The lockup on this guy is absolutely solid up, down, left, and right. There have been a little bit, there have been some hints of slippage on the 31s. Uh, I'll let you guys look that information up for yourself. Not something that I 100% enjoy. I like to um, make sure that uh, the blade is absolutely solid in every direction, and that is the case here. It is also perfectly centered, which is always the case with Chris Reeve knives, as far as I've experienced. I, you know, that those are really my nitpicks there. I, I wish that it was a little bit longer, and I wish the thumb stud was a little bit less pokey. Other than that, this is one of the best higher-end EDC knives that are out there. It's very easy to disassemble. It's very simple, very easy to hang on to. The cutting geometry is great. The blade shape is great. The blade steel is great. There's so many great things about this. If I was going to go with a small Chris Reeve knife, this would be the one, 100%. There's just so little to complain about on this knife. I really, really like it. I like the larger one better, and I like the Unum's on better than all of them, but if I had to go with a small one, definitely this guy by a landslide. I do not prefer the ergonomic lines of the Sebenza 21 or 31. Um, I just like this one better. Um, so like I said, you can pick this up in the description if you'd like to. This knife will be going on my most recommended knives playlist. What's the price? You didn't say what the price was. The price on this is $375. Considering this is a US made knife, it is full titanium and it is absolutely a cut above some of the high-end production titanium frame locks that you're seeing in the two to three hundred dollar range there is a noticeable difference in terms of quality and just the the build and the the design philosophy and the intended use philosophy there's and you know all of that chris reeves um uh warranty combined with how easy this thing is to disassemble is reason enough yeah, this is worth the extra money for sure. $375 gets you a lot of U.S. made knife, a very well U.S. made uh, knife, and a small package that's EDC friendly and legal in many places um, where large knives are, lot, are not legal. So anyways, uh, very recommendable knife. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. Please follow me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.